this is one of those <coughs> kind of blindside Sundays. The Spirit comes in and blindsides you. We've read our scripture for the morning. My topic is listed in the bulletin. I just can't stop talking. Uh, the story that is in the text is a very powerful story. And it's one that for years puzzled me simply because I know that every time a miracle was performed, someone comes closer to the Lord. Someone comes to know the Lord. Or someone comes under conviction. And there's a phrase in there where he tell somebody not to tell. And that really kind of puzzled me simply because it never, I don't see where that's happened too many times in the scripture. And knowing that God doesn't do anything just for the sake of doing it. He always does something to get somebody's attention to show who he is. <clears throat> and I want to look at why he commanded uh, the, the people not to speak of it. And what is the lesson in it for us? When God does something for you, obviously you want to share it. Amen. I mean, you know, that, and that's, that's really something that, you know, we can say that happens just in the world in general. That's true. Uh, when, when something good happens, we want to tell somebody. Mm. Yeah. Amen. That's true. <laughs> Uh, case in point, um, usually a couple of times a week, um, I look at the news every now and then, and usually on the news, uh, sometimes on Wednesday nights, I think it is, or Tuesday nights or Wednesday nights, uh, they post something with some numbers involved. And every now and then they post that somebody won something. And you see these people standing there holding up a little ticket where they won something. And they seem to be excited about it. They tell somebody. And when somebody purchases a, a new vehicle or a new house, they want somebody to know. And I didn't find out until after I moved here that they put that kind of stuff in the newspaper. I never understood that, but those kinds of things happen. But usually when there is a blessing, we want to share it. And when those blessings come, we want others to celebrate it. And we even see that there were parables that Jesus told about the lost coin, the parable of the lost coin, where uh, the person that found the lost coin and she called for her neighbors to come and celebrate with her finding the lost coin. So you see that there, there are evidences that when something good happens, we want to share. That's right. That's right. The woman at the well, when 
Uh, she realized who Jesus was. She dropped her water pot and went and told the whole town, come meet the man who told me everything about myself. My the man who'd been lame from birth and healed at the pool of Bethesda, when he was questioned, he says, I don't know whether he's a sinner or not. All I know is that I was blind and yeah. now I yeah. see. Yeah. Yeah. My God. And here we have a situation where someone was deaf and mute. And now, here comes Jesus. And he takes him aside from the multitude. Now there's a couple of things here I want to point out in the scripture that uh, you might not understand where, it's, where it comes from. First of all, uh, he, was the, he was leaving the coast of Tyre and Sidon, and of course that's a geographic location. And he came to the Sea of Galilee. We know where that is. And he talks about through the coast of the Decapolis. That's an area where there are ten cities in a row, all together. That's what it's called, the, the, the area of the ten cities. And so he comes across this person that is uh, both mute and has a speech impediment. And he pulls him aside and he does something. First of all, he takes his fingers and puts in his ears. And then he does something that some of us might think of as being gross. And he puts a little spit and touches his tongue. Now, you know that we'd be thinking, oh, how unsanitary. <laughs> Just the thought of it, you know, kind of makes us want to gag. Not a subject that we'd be talking about at the dinner table. But here we have Jesus doing something very similar to what he had done when he healed the blind man with the spittle and mud that he made to... Tell him to go wash his eyes at the pool of Siloam. Now, this man, after Jesus speaks to him, after he takes his fingers out of his ears and, and touches his tongue and tells him and commands him to speak and be able to hear. And it says that he, at that point, began to speak and to hear. But the part that puzzled me was then he tells him somebody who had been a mute and not able to hear. He tells him, don't tell anybody. <laughs> now let's think about this a minute. Now I don't know about you, but I, I, I think about me and my personality. If I had not been able to talk most of my life and had not been able to hear most of my life and then all of a sudden for the first time in my life I can both hear and talk what is the one thing I'm going to want to do? I'm going to want to hear everything and I'm going to want to say things I haven't been able to say all my life. Amen. And the more he tells him not to talk, and the more he tells the crowd not to talk, the crowd is amazed, the man is amazed. And I began to think about a song that we used to sing in the church, and most of the folks now that are into the new kinds of songs, they don't sing this song much anymore, but I remember a song from my childhood. Because y'all know I'm an old school gospel singer. There's a song that was sung, I said I wasn't going to tell anybody, but I couldn't keep it to myself. You see, there's something about when God does something in your life. Now, I can tell you from my own experience, because believe it or not, you're looking at someone who used to not talk at all. I think I told you my story a long time ago. 
I would sit in the classroom and, not, and know the answer and wouldn't say anything because I didn't want to talk. I would not open my mouth. And there were some deep-seated issues as to why I wouldn't talk. And I really didn't start talking. And my parents would ask me sometimes at home when they would ask me different things. And they say, well, what's wrong? You need to speak up. What's wrong? Nothing. <laughs> I would hold it in. But one day when I met Jesus... One day when the spirit got down inside of me and began to heal me from the pain and the hurts and the issues and all of the things that I had suffered. And I began to think about the things that God had done in my life. And I began to tell the story about where he had brought me from. Then I could say like the, the mute person, I once was blind, but now I see. I once was not able to talk, but now I can communicate. You see, because when the spirit got down inside of me, there was a story that I wanted to tell. There's a story that I wanted to let out of what God had done. Now, but I do understand you can't tell everything to everybody because everybody is not going to appreciate it. You can't cast your pearls among swine. God gives you wisdom when to tell your story and when not to tell your story. But when I'm in the place when I feel the Spirit gives me wisdom to share what he's done that it might encourage somebody that it might help somebody who's been through something similar that it might help somebody who's going through something that might help them to hold on a little while longer then something wells up and I can't hold my peace Whatever it is, I've got to not hold it, but I've got to let it out, and I just can't stop talking. I've just got to let it out and say what God has done. Roberta, I can understand why you sing that song when I look back over my life and I think things over, then I can truly say that I've been blessed and I've got a testimony and I've got to tell somebody what God has done. I've got to tell somebody where he's brought me from because somebody is going through. Somebody needs to hear my story. Somebody needs to hear your story. Somebody needs to know the things that God has brought you through. Somebody needs to know how he's picked you up, turned you around, placed your feet, on solid ground. Oh, if I had a witness today, if somebody could tell somebody else where God has brought them from. I heard some stories yesterday. I didn't have to get specifics, but I could feel the power of the testimony about where some of them had come from. I could feel as the spirit moved that God had brought some folks from a mighty long way. I could tell this morning as I heard the choir sing that God has brought somebody from a mighty long way. I believe that somebody has a story in here today that somebody else needs to hear. Don't hold back, but get wisdom as when to share your story. Don't stop telling your story. Tell your story because your story is your testimony. Your story. Where's the hymn book? Your story is the same as some of these stories. These are testimonies of what somebody has been through. And every time we sing it, every time we sing Amazing Grace, we're singing the songwriter's story. Every time we sing Blessed Assurance, we're singing the songwriter's testimony. Every time we sing Precious Memories, 
We're singing G J uh, J B F W B testimony. Every time we sing, it's wonderful to live for Jesus. We're singing Reverend Charles A. Craig Jr.'s testimony. Every time you tell your story, whatever your name is. My God. You're telling your testimony. Don't stop talking. And I know sometimes you think about it. I'm ashamed of where I'm come, I come from. Yeah, we all done stuff we yes, have to be ashamed Amen. of. My God. Amen. My God. Any one of us in here ain't done something we ought to be ashamed of, but we are ashamed of. Yes. But you know what? If you ain't there no more, and it's under the blood, thank God for it. There ain't nothing the devil can use against you. My God. Thank you, Jesus. Just don't stop telling your story. Because you never know when you get to heaven you might be standing next to somebody that will stand there and look at the throne and tell Jesus, if I hadn't heard your story, I wouldn't be here. If I hadn't heard your story, I wouldn't be here. If I hadn't heard your story, I wouldn't be here. If I hadn't heard your story, I wouldn't be here. And I can see as that's being said, I can see Jesus adding stars to the crowns of everybody's testimony as they are declared. And everybody who you win just might win somebody else. And guess who gets some credit for that? Because if you hadn't won somebody, there might be a whole lot of somebody else's that wouldn't be won. Amen. 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 I'm going to extend the invitation right now. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless the world. Thank you, Father. Maybe you're outside of the ark of safety. Maybe the Spirit's been speaking to you and you've been fighting it. My God. <coughs> Don't be ashamed. Don't worry about what anybody's going to think. You need to do this for you. You haven't been nowhere where nobody else in here has been. And you might be doing something that somebody sitting there hasn't done yet. And you might be taking a step to they haven't taken, and you, and you might be ahead of them. But don't put it off. Because God's speaking to you. He's speaking to you. And He wants to have that relationship with you. And your relationship is not going to look like anybody else's in this room. I mentioned each one of these deacons and deaconesses that are sitting here. And we talked about that yesterday. Each one of us sitting around that table has a unique relationship with the Lord. No two are the same. It just has to be genuine. That's all. No two are the same. God doesn't deal with me the same way he deals with Dr. Taylor or anybody else. He deals with each of us individually. Now, when we come together, he does deal with us collectively like he's done today. And oh, has he dealt with us collectively today. But even dealing with us collectively. 
uh, collectively today, each one of us is going away with from here with an individual evangelistic plan, an individual IEP. Each one of us is going away with something different. You might go away with encouragement. Somebody else might go away with conviction. Yes, Lord Jesus. You might go away with hope. Somebody else might go away with victory. Glory. Mm. But go away with something. Don't you stay away.